Well, it's additional to uh, what happening, what's happening at uh, at, uh, at youth football in Scotland and the academies in Scotland. It's 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 another uh, five training sessions a week on top of that. So that's that's 200 sessions a year. That's 800 sessions in four years. And if you see that uh, the boys and the girls who were in the program this year, uh, eight uh, eight thousand minutes of of ball training, additional to what they have normally have done. I think I think that shows how important it is to develop individual skills. Mm -hmm and to, to, build, to build a foundation. So when they leave the performance school at 16, they, go, they can go to full-time football and, and hopefully as a better player. First of all, what a fantastic opportunity these kids have got. I mean, if I was their age, I would, I would love to, to have the opportunity they do. When I was younger, it was a bit different. Um, you were still only allowed to play up to 12 years of age with, with boys, so we didn't get mixed development beyond that point. And because we, I played girls football, obviously, there wasn't the same structures and systems in place as there was for boys. So a lot of my development came through me actively going out and seeking the better players to play alongside, um, going doing things after school by myself and at the local park, just anything I could think of to make myself a better player. But now these guys have got an opportunity to train eight hours a week um, at their schools plus their club activity. I mean, it's just a fantastic opportunity. I guess I think in women's football we're starting to see the kind of fruits of our labour of about 10, 15 years worth of development that we've been doing down at grassroots level that's starting to come through. So at the national team level now, you've got a pool of players that has grown in terms of depth and, and of quality. So if, if a player comes out injured, we've actually got people to come in and replace with the same standard and there's a lot more competition for players and that automatically drives up the quality and the standard of play that you have. So that for, for us is fantastic and it's only going to get better and better. The biggest thing is the great advantage these children or young players have got, have got they're going to do and I was coaching, proper coaching every day, playing against players of a similar level, which is going to push them. Um, my personal experiences were just coming home from school and going out and playing outside in the street with whoever was local. So the standard maybe wouldn't have been that great. So I would try and challenge myself, like try and just use my left foot or, or do different challenges while playing against them. But these lads have got a great advantage and a great opportunity and one that um, I think they should do their utmost to try and take. Obviously, the opportunity has been given to you, it's up to you to take it as well. I think that's the important thing. I think that, um, I don't think that they're being given it on a silver platter or anything like that. I think I'm all for it. I think it's a fantastic opportunity and one that I wish that was available for me as well. I always speak about small percentages and that extra hour a day or a couple hours a day is going to give them that little bit extra percentage and that it's going to improve them as players. And it's great for Scotland, I think, that the fact that the SFA are behind it, the schools are, are on board as well, the parents, the kids seem excited by it. I think it's going to improve the standard of player we have in the national team and in the country, which, which is going to help us and be beneficial uh, to Scottish teams in the future. And I think now that everyone's come together and is pushing in the right direction, it's only going to be beneficial. Yeah, they just go to a normal school and uh, they travel in the morning. They arrive, uh, some arrive at 8 o'clock, some at, uh, at half 8. And, and, uh, and it depends on the timetable. They go into, straight into, into football and the performance coach is waiting for them. He's setting up his, uh, his training, uh, training uh, practice session and they go uh, for, for an hour, one hour and a half uh, trying to become a better player every day and then uh, the rest of the day they will go to school like any other normal kid and uh, maybe three or four times a week they will, uh, they will after school they will go to their pro youth academies and or their boys clubs and 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 do another session more team-based session probably uh, our program is more based on the on the individual program so it's not only football it's uh, also sport science it's also lifestyle it's also mindset training so uh, nutrition so we try to do a very holistic approach of, of, of our program. We're very grateful and, and, and delighted with the funding of Scottish Government that we can build a national performance centre in Scotland and it's going to be the, that, that will be the home of uh, elite player development and uh, coach education will be there, all the national youth team sites will train their activities, friendly games, uh, uh, boys and girls, all, all these teams uh, will see it as a hub, as, an, as a performance hub and I'm delighted with it because now we're all over the place in Scotland. We don't have a centre, um, and I'm I, I'm pretty sure that the National Performance Centre will help uh, also in, in in developing better players uh, because uh, facilities is important and uh, it's it's really good for uh, for us for the talent ID for for the coaches for the training sessions for the friendly games to have really a centre of excellence.